You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Sunday night, Twitter the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Tide Ranzo's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community discord server and full access to upcoming non-safe for work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> you have a tell. A tell? What do you mean? The way you look at things, you sort of... He tilts his head to the side. His eyes flick to different, to different points of the room, resting there for a while before moving to the next. I don't do that, do I? It's something I've always picked up on. He flicks them back to me. You observe things. I find myself as an unwilling participant in the staring contest. He's laser focused. The wind from the bay makes itself visible in the fabric of his shirt. It creases against his statuesque stillness. It makes waves through the white awning behind him. His form... You're doing it again. I was just... <laughs> it's not a problem. It's nice. That's why I don't believe you when you say you don't make stuff up. Man, don't make stuff anymore. That attention must go into something. Maybe one day I'll give another go. You were a lot less stable when you were making art. Or self-absorbed. Just not right now. I take a quick I take a quick bite too small to be considered a proper mouthful. You know when I saw you yesterday, I had a hard time believing it. Do you believe it now? I can't help but chuckle. No, I don't. <laughs> why not? It was just so long. I thought you were gone for good. He reaches across the table, gently grabbing my wrist and giving it a little shake. There. This help? I feel my ears swivel back from embarrassment. He's toying with you. What I mean is, look, things actually got worse for a while after you left. A lot of things. His grip loosens. Do you want to talk about it? Not right now. It was a while ago. A lot happens in a decade. I get it. A decade? It makes it seem even longer. I'm on the other side of it now, though. I suppose I'm working out what I'm what I'm doing now here, though. What I'm doing now that I'm here. You're being a bit too open about all this. Trust him. It's a fine place to be in. Speaking of the present, what have you been up to today? I helped Ranzo get some things moved into his mom's place. How was he? A uh, bit. I'm not sure. There's a weird feeling at that place. How come? Um, not to pry. There was some talk about his dad. They're doing a memorial service for him. Sorry to hear that. Did he pass away recently? No, actually. His grandma did a few years back, but the dad thing is weird. He left when Ranzo was a teenager. Ah. Deadbeat. Not for cigarettes type, huh? He wasn't that type you'd expect for that. No alcohol or anger problems. Didn't smoke. Always seemed pretty friendly. Ranzo says the last thing he saw of him was taking his mechanical tools out one night. Is that what he did then? There you go. He worked at a garage, did roadside repair too. He'd been doing a lot of late calls. Then one night he didn't come back. They found his car along the coast. What do you think happened? Mid-bite, I wonder if the extraneous details are worth covering. Some people thought he might have been attacked, or committed suicide. Nothing pointed to either, really. Police looked into it, but they didn't really get anywhere. As usual. A few people had theories, but... But simply, he had an affair. So it was kind of right on the deadbeat thing. How come that didn't come up earlier? Well, it's unconfirmed. A few people said they'd seen him with a woman some nights, north up the coast. Matched, with, matched up with the times Ranzo said he'd go out for roadside work. Don't think he was. Don't think she was local. Hmm. So an Emmett, right? Am I using the term right? Uh, pretty much. That's why people think they left up country somewhere, or somewhere else. So why a memorial? Doesn't seem like he'd be worth remembering. The affair is just a possibility, and I guess that's the problem. Nobody really knows what happened. If he's not dead, though, he may as well be. I think the memorial gives everyone some closure. I have to say, you're killing this. A dead grandmother? Suicide? Abandonment? You really know how to set the mood. Well... It's good that you're around for Ranzo at the moment. Sounds like he might need it. He's pretty much my best mate. I couldn't, could not not be there. So where has he been? Hello, gentlemen. Uh, how are you finding everything? It's great, thanks. Could we get some more of the wine? Uh, of course! 
She tops up her glasses with Griff while Griff makes approving chatter with her about the weather. When the waitress leaves, Griff turns his attention back to his plate. There's a silence, a gap in the conversation. What's wrong? He's been making the effort to carry this whole thing. He asked the questions, picked the wine, kept things rolling. I feel out of place. In this restaurant, in this conversation. Say something. Start a conversation. I don't know what to say. What is there to say? What do you want to know? Are you seeing anyone at the moment? His eyes go wide for a second. A shallow laugh. He brings a napkin to his mouth. I've seen some people. Seen? You know what he means. I've had some interest. Here and there. On and off. I haven't decided to lash anyone to the mask yet, though. God! It's kind of tricky, though. I'm never in one place long enough to put down roots. Let alone we consider something like that an option. You should put down roots here. You should quit your job and move here, and then you can consider it an option. Yeah, I bet. I guess it comes with the territory, right? Guess so. How about you? Anyone? Oh, yes, our Riley has the pick of the lay-by. No. I bet you've had some good ones, though. Well, what do you mean? Come on. When we were young, you'd take me for walks by the sea. You'd draw, you'd paint, you'd write songs. Second meal. You're a romantic, Riley. It's written all over you. I don't know about that. Don't hide it. Tell me about all the teenage crushes. Bad idea. The first loves. Even worse idea. The whirlwind boyfriends. Hell, maybe even girlfriends if the years gave you a change of heart. Definitely not. Do you really want me to? Do it in your Riley way. Paint the scene. Please don't do this. Well... You gonna do it? I close my eyes. Blot out the world around me. Do my best to ignore my own calls to stop. Oh my god! Holy shit, that's beautiful! My boots were drenched, parting pebbles. Crouched as crystal-thin waves rolled over. The sun dipped half between the sea and sky, its colors seeping into both. A lantern made from wicker and paper swayed on the surface. Something burred inside, face down. It was morning, so you could barely see the lantern's light. I hoped I hadn't been too late. I watched it drift slowly out along the sunken, sunken causeway, though I wanted it gone. I cried for sending it away. It had to go. It. Had. To. Go. Hey! You okay? Someone stood behind me. It must have been there a while. Uh, tide? Tide's coming in. You'll get caught if you don't move. I kept my eyes on the lantern, ears deaf to land until a sigh cu cut through my temper. <sighs> he stood beside me, facing the same horizon. What did you put in there, then? I didn't answer. Just a sniff. Yeah. I got ones like that, too. I don't do that lantern thing, though. His hands hung down, black as coal. He shone bright in my periphery. My eyes still followed the lantern, swept towards Kellis Rock. You wanted to forget? Forget it, right? So forget it. Don't look at it. Look at me. I had to force my eyes shut to tear them from the sea. Look at me. I opened them to a new world. Kind and piercing. His eyes were the first to greet me. Then the bright clouds around them. Sea air whipped at his clothes. His black hand, palm up. I had not seen somebody like him before. My hand had never felt so safe in that of a stranger's. I was pulled, weightless, to my feet. You're cold. Come on, I just I live I live just up on the cliffs. You want to come in? The edge of the edge of a salt pale house poked above the leathers the heathers of a headland. Thank you. We turned our backs to the lantern into the sea. I walked to him, parting pebbles together. He brought me back to land. That's how I met my first and last boyfriend. Riley. I feel my chin wrinkling. Damn, that's beautifully poetic. Holy shit. I feel my chin wrinkling. I, sh I swallow the feeling. <laughs> Good story, right? Have you really... No. What can I say? You set the bar too high. I'm sorry for... I shouldn't have brought it up. I brought it up. I asked about relationships. It's alright. 
Everything good for you, gentlemen? The waitress is back. Griff switches gear. Wonderful, thank you. Would you like to see the dis... Deploy the life jacket. Could we get the bill, please? Of course. She pulls out a black book and a card reader. Riley, are you all right? I'm fine, really. I reach for my wallet. Oh, no, not today. Griff hands a silver card to the waitress between two fingers. Put it all on here, please. Griff, you can't... I can and will, Mr. Coates. For lost time. Griff, that was like... 70 sterling. For a salad and some wine. Only with the tip. You guys don't tip enough here. Hey, I tip. But we actually pay wait staff a proper wage here, so... So you don't want to get good tips at the cafe? Say that. He smirks, eyeing his watch. You should probably get to the pub soon. This was nice, though. I'm sorry things got a bit weird at the end. Riley. He places a hand on my shoulder. And brings something out from his back pocket. Here. A napkin. A phone number is written on it. I'd be happy to do this. I'd be happy to do this again, but if you have any other ideas, let me know. You're the creative one, after all. I take the napkin in my hand. Hold on to it as tight as you can. I'll text you mine. Look forward to it. I'll see you soon, Riley. Griff waves and disappears up a thin, hilly street. I fold the napkin into my wallet. Wait, I thought he dated Griff. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that... Yeah, okay, so the implication's clear. That was indeed Griff. The black hands, yep. Alright, so Griff was his only boyfriend. I fold the napkin into my wallet. And just stand there for a while. How did I pull that off? <laughs> the steps down into Shinbone are thin. A damp stone wall reflects light from the doorway. The decor isn't as I expected. It's a sort of a mix between retro speakeasy and mid-century acid trip. Definitely an upcountry investment. Well, I'm gonna admit that I... That's one of the things I've never done. I've never done LSD, never had an acid trip. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I would like to do at some point. Just so I can say that I've done it, because it sounds like it might be a wild fucking trip, and... I wouldn't mind experiencing that at some point, so, yeah. Anyway, the music playing is an equally mismatched co cocktail of genres. The patrons are, a varied, are varied, too, many of them likely from the Liverson crew. There's a round table towards the back where two figures sit talking. One has a look on her face of intense, patient understanding. It seems a little forced. The other is cradling a beer stein between two, ta between two yellow talons. I pace over to with the rhythm of the music. They haven't noticed me yet. I don't want to talk about that side of things. I get that. I understand that, but... Sounds juicy. Hang back. But what? I know it's difficult, and I think you need to let him settle before... Despite my careful approach, Sal catches me. Oh, hey, Riley. I wave to the both of them and pull up a chair next to Joe. But you said this place had live music. Oh, yeah, it's more DJs, if anything. Sometimes a guy comes in with an acoustic and does jazz, cover, jazz covers of top 40 songs. I pull out the free chair between them and sit down. There's some menus on the table. Did you order already? Sal wanted to wait. I'm starving. Come on, Riley. Enable me. I skim the page. Place burgers. Breaded cod. Varying types of chips that are marked as fries. There's an option down the bottom with a big green V stamped onto it. Swingin' filet cauliflower. Joe said you were gonna get dinner before you came here. I did. It wasn't very filling. What are you getting? The full act of cod, loaded fries, extra filet. You, Sal? I'm not taking any chances, just getting chips. Alright. And, alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye